children especially with apraxia, and this is from the practice portal, are increased risk for problems with expressive language. How many of our kids with apraxia don't have some delay in expressive language? And weakness in phonological foundations, again, what I told you earlier is that we know that even kids with speech sound disorders and apraxia tend to maybe have less well-defined phony categories. So that's a foundation for literacy, and there are some studies showing that. Um, Lewis is, and her colleagues have done um, a fair amount of work. They did one study specific to kids with apraxia. Gail Gillen, we'll talk a little more about her. Um, but these problems may reflect the consequences of apraxia non-related also, so comma, non-related co-occurring problems such as learning difficulties and intentional difficulties. So remember what we talked about earlier, that you know, you've got these synapses going down from your brain to your muscles to talk, but you've got synapses that are connecting things in your brain all the time. And if you've got inefficiency in one area, is it likely that that's the only kind of pathway that's disrupted? Probably not. I've worked with a, a group of researchers at Mayo that do learning disabilities research, and basically, what we have found is that if you have one kind of learning disability, you more than likely have another one. We just don't always look for it. So we don't always, if we have a child with a reading disability, we don't always look for a written language disability. Or if we have a math learning disability, we don't always look for a reading disability, although they co-occur at a high rate of frequency. So kids with a speech disability, which is in some ways a learning disability, although it's more, more toric in what we're talking about, we're likely to have some inefficiencies in that neurologic system that may not be apraxia, they might be inefficiencies that are just part of that child's structure. 